your unique story. Our global audience. Global One Media. Hello and welcome to another one of our exclusive interviews with senior leaders of companies across the board to help you, our viewers, remain up to date and make intelligent investment decisions. I am Munir Barazi, your business analyst and host, and today I am pleased to welcome Howie Honeyman, the Director, President, and CEO of Forward Water Technologies, a company that is using its proprietary forward osmosis technology to revolutionize the remedi remediation of wastewater. Forward Water is listed on the TSX Venture Exchange as FWTC. Hello, Howie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Marina. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. So, Howie, this is the first time we speak. So, if you could tell our viewers, please, about Forward Water Technologies. What do you do? What is unique about FWT? And why did you choose accelerating the world's transition to clean water sustainability as your mission? Uh, it's a great question. So, Forward Water is participating in the ability to take care of our clean water resources and allow something that is fundamental to human rights uh, be accessible to everybody. And that's our main mission. But it, to do that, what we're looking at is, we're looking at taking industrial wastewater and being able to repurpose it and reuse it and recycle it almost on an endless loop. So we don't have to use our fresh water resources um, over and over and over again as a waste product um, and dispose of it in a way that is, is, is not environmentally sustainable. Uh, and is uneconomical, to be perfectly frank. Um, I joined Forward Water for that mission. Uh, I saw it in the university stages, uh, spent the last number of years taking it, uh, reducing the scientific risk, taking it out of the laboratory, into commercial environments, eliminating the scale of risk. And now we're in a commercialization phase where we're going to be able to take industrial wastewater, clean it up, and repurpose it so we can use it over and over and over again, making industrial processes far more sustainable than they are today and preserving water resources so we can all enjoy them. Excellent. That's a really noble mission, especially that water is a vital resource for, for life on Earth. And you work in many industries. One of those is lithium. What role does water, and specifically forward water, play in the emerging lithium capture and mining space, and why? Yeah, this is very important. So... <laughs> we realized in our commercialization phase of the last number of months that lithium processing is primarily going to be addressed by taking underground aquifer water, water that's stored up, been underground for hundreds of years, and extracting the lithium from it. And that's how most new lithium is going to be recognized for the EV market. But that means you need to process these really heavily mineralized water streams. And it turns out our technology is uniquely positioned to do exactly that. We can take the water out of the ground and after multiple process steps, we can condense that water, make the lithium more concentrated and subsequently make it easier to get. So what we're doing is we're enabling the reduced cost, the reduced energy footprint and the reduced size of equipment needed to get the lithium out of those underground storage um, uh, aquifers. And subsequently, we're seeing all sorts of uptake uh, in the lithium market for our technology in multiple companies. And so not only are we participating in uh, recycling wastewater, but we're actually aiding in enabling the EV market by making lithium capture lower energy, lower cost, and lower capital expense. So we're really excited by that. This is fascinating that you can use your technology in, in different uh, domains and I've read about your approach is it's very economically efficient and uh, let me ask you about brine management uh, you also work on brine management why is this focus critical to your mission and how significant is brine management is in comparison to waste treatment perhaps you could expand yeah. on the differences yeah this is again really something we've interested we've learned over our commercialization phase brine management is relates to the use of brines. Brines are really super salty, um, mineralized liquids that industry uses to perform certain functions. Um, all sorts of chemical manufacturing, food processing, um, oil and gas manu uh, manipulation, all sorts of things. But these brines are valuable and they do as they do chemical processes. But in the use of those brines, they become diluted. 
what we can do is we can step in and we can reconcentrate those brines and bring their value back up and reuse those brines over and over again by extracting the clean water out of the spent brines. So we're able to repurpose these valuable brines, recapture the clean water in them, and we're not boiling the water to do this. We're using our really uh, uh, proprietary process to extract water, and that's low energy. So we're actually returning the brines for value, getting clean water, and doing that using a lower energy footprint, which both reduces the amount of CO2 that's produced and keeps the costs under control. So again, providing multiple benefits and reusing the products that industry uses on an everyday basis. That is excellent. Um, and there are other technologies in this space, such as evaporators. How does your technology fare against, against those evaporators? And how will you establish yeah. a dominant market position? So the go-to technology that has been established for decades, 30, 40, 50 years, is what's called evaporators or multi-effect evaporators. And those do exactly what the name suggests. They boil the water to evaporate the water from the contaminated uh, solution. Anybody who's put water on the stove to boil it knows how much energy goes into doing that. That's incredibly energy intensive. You need to supply the energy, so that means CO2. You need to burn the energy, so that means uh, cost. What we do is we use a specialized membrane process that pulls water and only water across the membrane with no applied energy. And this is the process called osmosis. And we do that using a very special chemical package that we can recycle with a very low energy footprint. And subsequently, we don't have to vaporize the water, meaning we don't have to put the energy into it. So by doing that, we regain the water, but we do so using a very low energy input, lower cost, lower CO2 footprint. And again, we regain the water so we can reuse it in other places. So that's that's one of the reasons we're, we're, being, we're seeing uh, commercial adoption is because we're going um, against the incumbent technology, which has been in place for decades and is incredibly energy intensive. That was fine two decades ago. It's not acceptable anymore. We need a sustainable approach and we provide that. Those are so many great benefits in, in different areas, such as also reducing energy use um, while uh, doing the processes. Um, and how we among the other industries you work in is the food and beverage concentrates. How do they work and how is FWTC offering a new perspective in doing this? Yeah, this is really interesting for us as well. Um, we realize that as we extract water, we actually concentrate the, the, the source that we're extracting the water from. And we sort of looked at the technology and we said, well, where else could we, we use that? And it turns out that that food concentration products is a completely new sector for us. And we add additional benefits. So often to make fruit juice concentrate, to make it lower cost for transport, you remove the water from it, but you do that by boiling it or thermally treating it to evaporate the water. Well, that concentrates it, but it changes the flavor profile and destroys the naturally good taste of the original fruit juice. We can apply our technology to extract the water using a cold process thereby preserving the flavor and the, uh, and the quality of the fruit juice, but concentrating at the same time so you reduce transportation costs. So this is a way of getting fresh, natural uh, tasting uh, orange juice, if you will, at the price of frozen concentrate. So you get the benefit of the taste and the flavor, but at the, at the reduced cost of concentrate. And we're looking at all sorts of ways to, to apply this, not only fruit juice, but caffeinated beverages, concentrated coffee, concentrated um, alcoholic, uh, uh, beverages such as wines, beers, uh, different types of, of spirits, um, and, and all sorts of uh, uh, applications for these concentrates, not only just reconstituting the juice, but using them as flavoring additives. And we see a huge potential there as well. So our, our business is, is building an entirely second platform, uh, not just dealing with the waste, not just looking at lithium recovery, heavy industry, but also looking at uh, providing a, a better concentrate product in the food and beverage industry. Another great application of your proprietary technology. Uh, my last question, uh, what are your geographical expansion plans in 2023? And are there any other developments that investors would be interested to hear about? Yeah. Well, this is an important thing to consider. How do we rapidly scale? And our technology is based, as you point out, is a proprietary technology. 
but it uses an assemblance of uh, off-the-shelf standard engineering um, uh, operations. So the, anybody can access these. We just put them together in a novel fashion and use it in a unique way. So how do we get into other markets? Well, there's a lot of capacity in the, glo on the, in, in the global environment to manufacture the type of equipment we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to partner with companies in the local geographic areas that have the ability to manufacture equipment. And in partnering with them, we can deliver to their current client base that they're already serving in the, say, in the wastewater space. They can manufacture the equipment. We don't have to build a large, complex fabrication capability and ship to those other jurisdictions. So through partnering, we can rapidly enter um, other areas of the globe. We already have partnerships in the United Kingdom. We have partnerships along these lines in uh, India, as an example, which is a massively growing market. And we have partnerships that we're currently looking at establishing in the United States. So that's how we're going to rapidly enter the market globally, bring our proprietary licenses and ability to operate to these partners and deliver to their client base that they already have a relationship with. So that's our, that's our rapid uh, uh, deployment pathway. And I'm sure the benefits you're offering are needed in, in all of those locations. Certainly lots of developments to be looking forward to. Howie Honeyman, CEO and President of Forward Water Technologies. Thank you so much for sharing all of those updates. We look forward to hearing from you again soon. Pleasure speaking with you, Bonnier. Thank you very much.